And I guess the question I throw to you guys is, what do you think happens Wednesday morning? Mm-hmm. So I, I think Wednesday morning is a little bit early to tell, probably, is, is the truth. I think you're probably going to start seeing stuff Thursday, maybe. And, and basically, if you're rooting for the country, I think, obviously, I'm, I voted for Trump already. I voted early. Um, in, in my opinion, if you want what's best for the country and you're a Trump person, the order of preferred results is Trump by a lot, Trump by a little, Kamala by a lot, Kamala by a little, in terms of what's best for the country. Okay, because Kamala by a little is a disaster area. Yeah. Kamala by a little is a mess. You know, I, I've been painting this worst case scenario, so, you know, that I got prophecy points. It I turns out being we right. We're talking about oh, it. But this, this is, the, here, here's your disaster scenario. Your disaster scenario is Trump picks up North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada. Okay, takes him to 268. He then loses 270 to 268. There is only one problem. The 2020 census was wrong. The Census Department has acknowledged the 2020 census was wrong. That's the key, that's wrong. the key is that they've admitted that it was wrong. And so the arguments are going to be even they've admitted. Correct. And, and they dramatically the population in places like Florida and in places like Texas. And they dramatically overcounted in places like New York and Delaware. And Rhode Island, like, by, like five percentage points in some places. The population in these places, electoral votes get allocated on the basis of the 2020 census. So if they'd actually done the count properly, Trump could lose all of the blue wall states and still win the election. And so if it ends up being 270 to 268 with Trump winning the states that we just mentioned, Florida is going to file a lawsuit and it will end up at the Supreme Court because they will say they have been materially harmed. People have been disenfranchised in the state of Florida by the failure to properly count their vote and the because make- of the census data. And then it'll be up to the Supreme Court and the with three Trump court, appointees yeah. to figure out whether that's true. Now, I, my guess is that the, the court will probably kick that case. <clears throat> my guess is the court will say that's a political question. We're not going to touch it. You know, that, that should have been ironed out by the, by the legislature. But is that going to make anybody feel any better? Probably not. Now, so so ben, they, me, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. I want to I add to that. You saw the Fifth Circuit Court ruling from Mississippi. Did you see this one? I, I missed it. Fifth Circuit Court ruled that ballots received after Election Day, even if postmarked before Election Day, are illegal to be counted. Mm-hmm. Now, this is just the, fir- the Fifth Circuit. We saw in, uh, I believe it was in Nevada, a, 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 a totally counter ruling from the federal courts. There's a probability that come tomorrow night, Donald Trump is clearly ahead, but not by enough. And they say with mail-in votes coming in in several states, we may see a repeat of 2020 where Kamala actually ends up winning. Kamala ends up winning. Republicans sue, citing the Fifth Circuit uh, uh, ruling, goes to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court says, of course you can't count ballots that came in after the election. Cuts them all out. Democrats then say, but we did win. Those were ballots. Trump's cronies just threw them out and stole the election. Yeah, which, that's right. Which they've been they've been kind of uh, preparing the landscape with that by calling the the Supreme Court, you know, Trump's uh, right wing core and all and all the things. Did, did you see, did you see Jamie Raskin on Mars? So Jamie Raskin was on yeah. Mars, right? And he, and he openly said that we'll certify the election if we feel that it was free and fair. <laughs> which, like, dude, I mean, come on. If we feel but, uh, if we that feel it that it's free. free and this is exactly yes. what you were ripping Trump for in 2020, and now you're doing the exact same thing. This is why whenever you get the like Trump is a threat to democracy bullshit. It's like, okay, guys, like you do all the exact same things that Donald Trump did and would do. And then you claim it's a threat to democracy when he does it. But when you do it, it's a defense of democracy. And, you know, this all spirals out of control. I think that there are a bunch of things that have happened in American life that are truly bad over the course of the last 10 years. Among them, the fact that we have not unified any of our voting procedures. I live in the amazing state of Florida, which fixed all of its voting after 2000. So after 2000, with the debacle, with the the butterfly ballots and all that, we fixed our voting, which means that we count all of our early voting early, right? All that stuff's been tabulated. And then everybody who votes day of, you, t- you feed your thing in the machine, it's counted all of it. Five minutes after the polls closed, you're going to have a result from Florida. It's really easy. It's not difficult at all. And none of these other states have done it. That is a complete mess. And, you know, and, and then you have just the, the fact that I think in the minds of both parties, something is fundamentally broken. So uh, as long as I've been alive, the general rule was when somebody loses a presidential election, the going theory is the reason why they lost the presidential election is because they weren't good enough to win. Right? This is true for my entire life. If, if H.W. loses to Clinton, it's because H.W. wasn't good enough. If Dole loses to Clinton, it's because he wasn't good enough. If Gore lost to Bush because he wasn't good. Kerry, same thing. McCain with Obama, same thing. Romney, same thing. Then 2016. And in 2016, the left could not believe for love or money that Donald Trump was a better candidate than Hillary. And so they shifted the logic. It was Hillary definitely couldn't have lost because she was a shit candidate. She lost because of Facebook and just because of the Russians. And she lost because of all these other reasons. And the right responded to that in 2020 by being like, well, he didn't lose because he was a worse candidate than the the dead guy. It must have been all of these other facts. The problem is when both parties refuse to acknowledge that their candidate possibly could have lost to the other guy, Mm -hmm. 
then where does all that energy go? Civil back war. at the system. Back at the system. Now, um, listen, we're too lazy for civil war, okay? It ain't going to happen. <laughs> we're too fat. We're too lazy. No, you getting out of your bed and shooting somebody over this shit? Like, th- there'll be a few people who do some violent things, but the continued breakdown of the social fabric is going to... Is going to yeah, you just, have to remember uh, that in the, in the Civil War of the 1860s, uh, the Ivy Leagues never missed a single crew match. That's, <laughs> wow. the, that's an actual true statement. Uh, that's before standoff weaponry. You're not going to have a civil war in the age of cruise missiles because the <laughs> because the elite in uh, Connecticut don't get to sit that one out. Absolutely, it's not going to be any civil. Ben, I wanted to follow Insur- up with but, you but, on but, one of the but insurgency. You know, so so uh, Vi- there there could certainly be violence. I wonder. I, I, right. So so I, if you're going to game it out, I think the next thing that happens is let's say that Kamala Harris becomes president with all this craziness, and then she nukes the filibuster. Let's say for some reason she's able to gain control of the Senate also. She nukes the filibuster. She passes a law over the objections of pretty much everybody else. Then the next step will be you'll see states say, come and enforce it. Right. You want to do it? Come and enforce it. We're not going to let you enforce it. Right. Nullification. Like that, that's where the thing starts to break down again. And you've seen nullification in certain circumstances from both left and right. So you've seen nullification for example, on marijuana laws in California for years and years and years, the federal government was prosecuting them. California said, we don't want to do it. And so California would basically just try and stymie or on immigration law, right? The left does it all the yeah. time. California would stymie immigration law. And then you would see it the reverse way on, on the border with Arizona. Arizona would say, you're not going to enforce the immigration laws. We'll enforce the immigration laws. And the federal government would step in. These kind of conflicts are actually super common across American history. Those are just going to get much so worse. So let me, let, me, let me ask, do you think that uh, there's, a, there's a few scenarios to look at? Donald Trump wins and then immediately says, we are going to deport these illegal immigrants. If he sends law enforcement in any capacity from the, the lightest federal law enforcement to the outright army, do you think there's any scenario where California resists federal authority? I, I think very, very unlikely. Really unlikely. Because, again, I think that that gets too hot too quickly. I don't think Gavin Newsom honestly wants to go up against actual armed federal troops. But does, also, it, does, I, does it require I, Gavin Newsom? Um, what, if, what, if, what if far leftist Antifa set up a Chaz chop? I mean, we saw in Seattle uh, when they set up the Chaz, they killed people. And so I, I, I agree. I'm not trying to. I agree with that. I agree with that. You could see something like that. You could see like right. zones of resistance that pop up so, in places like California. Sure. So the first thing I'll say is, you know, I certainly talk about uh, Civil War probably more than most, but we don't talk about as much as the memes try to make it out to be. But the media, I think right now is probably like 15 to 30 articles about Civil War that are currently up because of the potential for violence. Mm-hmm. And so the question then is, I'll, I'll put it this way, I do not believe in the near future or in the immediate, we're looking at any kind of civil war potential. It, it could theoretically be decades if something does happen. We are, according to many academics, in a civil strife period, which could also be like Bleeding Kansas, or a better example would be the civil rights era, which did not result in civil war. However, the things that worry me the most are the left's propensity to violence, like Chaz Chop, there was an autonomous zone in Seattle, Atlanta, Minnesota, Portland, Portland, right. And they killed people a lot of it. So in the event that, uh, uh, and I'll, I'll throw it to Sam Cedar again, he gets a lot of shout outs because we just talked. He told me that basically he thinks these outlets are writing articles about civil war because it's sensational. It's click, it's clicks. It's going to make traffic and they're going to make money from it. And then I asked him, so you don't think there's any potentiality, even if it's slim. And he's like, no, of course not. I say, okay, Donald Trump gets elected. Let's say, let's say Kamala Harris wins through mail-in voting. But the Supreme Court says, citing the Fifth Circuit, mail-in votes are thrown out. Therefore, Trump is actually the winner. Democrats, what do they do? Sam's response, well, in 2000, look, Democrats gave up. They let George W. Bush be the president. I say, agreed. Now, Donald Trump then says, we will enforce immigration law and begin the deportation of 11 million people or more. Do Democrats or activists respond? Now, crank it up. Do you think Donald Trump would actually use the military to go and start deporting people? Of course, the Democrats say yes. I said, so tell me you believe there's there's a scenario where Trump will call in the military to round up illegal immigrants after stealing an election, and you don't think that there will be a reaction from the left with violence or an escalation to war? And he hemmed and hawed and ultimately said, I just don't think it's very likely, but kind of conceded. I'll put it this way. I certainly think it's slim, but Rudyard Lynch of What If Alt Hist says that based on looking at the history of the Bolsheviks, the French Revolution, the British Civil War, and the American Civil War, though they're all different, and we're not necessarily going to follow a state versus state kind of thing, he's predicting 1,000 dead by April, which I think is way over the top, but he has a bet. $1,000 if 1,000 people are dead by April. I think that's crazy. But what he said was, stop thinking about it like armed groups going up against each other and more just like 
we end up seeing what happened with Errol Dan Danielson in Portland or Chaz where people shot somebody else mm -hmm. and there's going to be a political underlining to it. So that's why I say maybe insurgency. Hopefully nothing. I think you're completely right, Ben. I'm hoping that Trump wins massively to the point where it sends a message nationally that we are done with what the left has to offer and the yeah. American people don't want it. That, that, that's exactly right. So and, and I, I will say I, I do not like it when I think politicians and political leaders, the more they talk about this idea that there will be civil war, I think it's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. People start to take it very seriously. They think, OK, who could I? Should? But I agree with you that there are activist groups that are geared toward resisting lawful authority. And those do exist on both sides of the aisle. But it, I, I think it is very likely that in the scenario like you're painting, there would be resistance by some groups yeah. to lawful authority. No, this stuff's happened in the past. I don't think that. This is also what I've been telling our team here at The Daily Wire, which is you have to prepare yourself for Election Day. And I don't think Election Day is, I wish it were Election Day. It's really everything that's going to happen as a result of and a continuation of tomorrow. We probably won't even have a winner tomorrow. We may have a winner Wednesday. We may not have a winner until Saturday. It may then get contested to the courts. You may not know. It may be like the year 2000. We didn't have a winner until the Supreme Court ruled. So it could be the end of the year before we even know who the next president is going to be. All of that is very bad in a system where both sides believe that the other side has become an existential threat to the country. But, but we, So we have to prepare ourselves in the business that we're in, in the business that you're in. We have to prepare ourselves, yes, mentally and, and yes, emotionally. But we, we actually have to prepare ourselves almost spiritually for the temptations that are going to accompany the next several days and weeks. The temptation to assert as fact things that have not been proven factually. The temptation to give in to emotional rhetoric instead of using our our voices to try to cut through try to determine what's true and try to advocate on behalf of what's true and there's going to be so much rigged against us you know it's it's structurally the case that most states count the election day ballots before they count the mail-in ballots in the early voting and historically democrats do more mail-in even when there's not uh, any impropriety Democrats are more likely to have voted by early historically or to have voted by mail-in. So it's, it is just a fact that at the earliest part of the night, Trump will probably have a lead and then that, that lead will start to shrink throughout the day. Well, we're so prepped by our experiences, by our emotions, by talk of civil war constantly in the media. It's not just for clicks. It's a, it's also a psyop. It's meant to, to prepare people to have certain kinds of reactions. And so I guess all I'm saying is there's going to be an enormous amount of temptation to give in to all of this instead of trying to ascertain what is fact, trying to stand on behalf of what is fact, and trying to fight our political battles in a in a passionate but responsible way, which I think is the only way forward as a country. Thanks for checking out this clip from Timcast IRL. Make sure to watch the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Subscribe to this channel, and we will see you all there.